1500s free of ice if they take mm -hmm. the Perry Reese map and other maps the amount of information of ancient civilizations and ancient uh, energy forces in Antarctica were enough to drag the most powerful people in the world down there or beckon them from the Pope to Kirill, the Russian patriarch, uh, Vladimir Putin. We've got, obviously, uh, John Kerry went down there. Obama mm -hmm. did go down there, although it wasn't announced. Pope, what's his name, has been down there, the current one. And I'm sorry, it, but that's that's how I refer to it. So something's going down there. The energy mm -hmm. forces that you are now seeing experienced in the waveforms coming out of Antarctica are absolutely astonishing. Look at what's happening to Europe, their weather, their temperatures. You're seeing world record lows. You're seeing absolute storms. And you can literally watch the, it's like if somebody turned on a, a, a transmitter that's been dormant for all these years. Mm -hmm. I've talked to people that have been beneath the ice. They talk about a tropical paradise, similar to uh, the old movies where the Nazi U-boats go in under mm -hmm. a certain uh, Doug McClure movies. I forget what they were called, but they're really good. You know, in my opinion, oh, the land that time forgot. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so even I even posted on my website, and it's w wasn't he in uh, Bermuda Triangle too? Well, he may have been, but this was uh, everything that we're talking about is Antarctica, okay? Yeah. And Antarctica is interesting because obviously you're in the Southern Hemisphere, and Southern Hemisphere is the best place to observe and has been for the last decade, Planet X. And wouldn't you know it, one of the ancient, not ancient, but one of the older science fiction uh, shows was basically the men from Planet X. I'm doing a, a project, uh, maybe letting the cat out of the bag, but for, oh. Branson, for Branson, I'm going to have uh, a pretty interesting presentation Apart from my main presentation, you were there, so you know I like to do the video one on Mars and stuff. Yeah, uh, uh, it's great. You know, and people, people from all over the world love those things. Mm -hmm. So the idea from Antarctica specifically is this, that when Admiral Byrd in 1947 went down there with Operation High Jump, we got our heads handed to us on a platter by the Germans. About one-third of the uh, German high command and their technology went to Antarctica. They called it New Schwabenland. Operation Paperclip, even, listen to me, even, and I, I'll share something. I've never said this on anybody's show, but it, I, I guess it's right to share this. Okay. I talked to Greg Evenson days ago, and mm -hmm. his, his uncle was a personal friend of Dr. Warner von Braun. Anybody that doesn't know who Warner von Braun is, especially the German space scientist, the head of NASA, mm -hmm. the point is Dr. Warner von Braun told Greg's uncle that he had been personally taken to a planet called Arion, A-R-I-A-N or A-R-I-O-N, as in Arian. And, no. uh, and von Braun was a member of the SS, but von, von Braun and Hermann Oberth were the two smartest rocket scientists in the world. And they both are on record as saying, Oberth said there's two types of technology, ours and theirs. Uh, he also said we, weren't, we Germans weren't smarter than the West, we just had help. Uh, Heinrich Himmler's occult library, 13,000 volumes, was uh, found, you know, less than maybe two years ago. 13,000 volumes. Uh, I, I detailed in my book, Empire Beneath the Ice. I don't know if you can put it up, but I would I say can. this. Empire Beneath the Ice has been the most phenomenally uh, accepted book I've ever written next to Genesis 6 Giants. And Empire Beneath the Ice, it, there's enough footnotes in there to make everybody happy, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And in the flying saucer realm, if you think about this, 1947, it was Roswell, too. So when you're talking about the different high command of Germany sitting in a seance with some woman who's giving birth <laughs> out of her birth canal to an wow. ectoplasmic projection that's uh, dictating advanced math and engineering uh, equations. And by the way, this is a matter of fact. This isn't just, all oh, yeah, they were all sitting around having a, a great time smoking something. But the idea is, is that the amount of intelligence gathered from another dimension, wow. uh, the spiritual dimension, the fallen angels, and by the way, the occult nature of the Third Reich, occult just means hidden, mm -hmm. okay? Right, right, right. right. But, the, but the fascination with it is what caused me to basically try and see how it would fit in. So understand this, if you look at the U.S. space program, entirely built by former Nazis SS, okay? Oh, yeah. Operation Paperclip, but there were eight mm -hmm. other, you know, uh, and even, and I'll tell you, in, another interesting thing, okay. uh, J Japan's uh, famous Dr. Ishii, 
ISHI, Unit 731, mm -hmm. was brought in the United States, given a new identity, and he was the, if you will, the original uh, Island of Dr. Moreau guy that was doing human experimentation. Obviously, the Chinese don't like that guy, but we took the world's <laughs> top uh, uh, scientists, brought him in, gave him hidden identities. Mm -hmm. But again, how is this? I'm sharing everybody that Greg Evenson passed away tonight, and yet two days ago, this is one of the things, Daniel, he wanted time to come on and talk about what he didn't get time to talk about. And I, I knew he knew he was going to pass and go to be with Jesus. I knew it. Wow. Greg, in all the time that we had known each other, has never called me within a space of 10 minutes a couple times in a row and then followed up by another call. So it was mm -hmm. an urgency. Mm -hmm. But that's one of the things he told me. He told me some other stuff. And right now, in honor of what's going on with his funeral and his, his, his family, I'll just shut up with that. But I will tell you that this whole issue of what's underneath the ice in Antarctica, we're talking about things that are mind-blowing. For instance, if somebody wants to know what's under the Antarctica, a spy once told me, look, you know, I don't have on my phone 1-800-SPY, but he sought me out and he said, let me tell you this. If you notice the Russians in Yamanatu Mountain, or Yamantu Mountain, that's where the Russian high command, he said it's like a city within a mountain. Yeah, you can look it up. I think it's Y-A-M-A-N-A-T-A-U or something like Yamantu. He said, imagine this, Steve, multiple times bigger than the Antarctic. Antarctica is a continent, okay? Mm -hmm. And what's there's 100 volcanoes, subsea volcanoes. So it's interesting that Jules Verne even was <clears throat> using Antarctica as his, uh, if you will, the uh, his uh, oh, Vulcan where, you know, Captain Nemo went after 20,000 20, leagues under the sea. Mm -hmm. And so it's heated by, if you will, uh, volcanism, and they have an inner sun, okay, and mm -hmm. they have uh, life forms there that just haven't been seen. Now, mm -hmm. if you're watching Antarctica, when I broke the story on what was going on in Antarctica two years ago, as it related to the Third Reich ruling the world, etc., then I mm -hmm. said, watch the headlines. I said, Mars will become the most dominant theme in the headlines. Now, what are you seeing? Water on Mars, life form on Mars, hey, maybe bacteria on Mars, what are called cyanobacteria. I, I you know, up here in, in Montana, I, I like down the canyon from Yellowstone National Park. Spent last year photographing it from a helicopter. Uh, probably got more time in a helicopter over Yellowstone Park photographing than anybody. I'm not bragging, but I get these dumb phone calls. Why do you live at Yellowstone? It's going to blow. And I said, listen, <laughs> what found in Yellowstone, a little bacteria changed mm -hmm. the history of the world forever. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, basically, uh, Kerry Mullis got the Nobel Prize. Biochemistry shared it with another guy. And basically, this bacteria made CRISPR technology or gene splicing uh, possible. Okay. And with that, with that, Daniel, it changed the history of genetic engineering forever. In other words, you can combine anything with anything now. Well, let me ask you something. Um, uh, recently, in the in the headlines, uh, a big earthquake hit ar around what Anchorage, I think. But the wells in Florida, their their level dropped uh, that far away. I don't know how many miles that was. Thirty six hundred miles. Is it that perhaps that water went into some of those underground voids? It had to go somewhere. Well, yeah, and water levels. You know, the aquifers, the Ogallala aquifer. That's a mouthful. The, the Ogallala Sioux was one of the mm -hmm. Native American tribes, but the Ogallala Aquifer, that pretty much is a central main reservoir of water in the Midwest, you know, the right earthquake, for instance, on the New Madrid or something, is mm -hmm. going to affect that. But it's just like in Montana. Typically, when Alaska has a major volcanic explosion or anything, we'll get sympathetic earthquakes in Montana. I've been in Yellowstone Park when there were over 800 microquakes in one day. I never felt one of them, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, saying that, as I came on with you tonight, two hours ago, I got a friend, uh, Brad, I won't say his last name, said, Steve, we just had the weirdest thing happen. The taste of our water, he lives, I think, in around Clearwater, Florida. Mm -hmm. okay. He said, the water's changing. We've got minerals in the water. Uh, so something's leaking someplace. So what I call it is sympathetic fracture zones, okay? It's kind of like when you hit a piece of glass with a hammer mm -hmm. where you get the point of impact, but then you get all the little spreading uh, kind of like fistulas off to the side or fissures. That's mm -hmm. what's happening. And I wow. can say this, the greatest migrations in history in the United States from even the time of recorded history in the United States will take place 
after the great quakes that are coming because water will be the most important uh, substance for life. Look, you can go a while without eating. You can make do, but without water, you're toast. Imagine mm -hmm. this, the Cascadia region. Now they're talking about Mount St. Helens, Mount mm -hmm. Rainier. They're talking about the entire West Coast. You're seeing you're seeing accelerating earthquakes, and obviously everybody's laughing. Oh, the California, you know, we've been hearing that for years. <laughs> well, I wouldn't be smart alecky at uh, smart alecky <laughs> at this point. I've told people the newest fault line goes right along Santa Monica Boulevard. Are you familiar with the LA area very well? Uh, no. Okay, Santa Monica Boulevard basically goes right in from the beach at Santa Monica all the way through Hollywood, down into you know uh, uh, East LA if you just follow it far enough. It goes through you now Hollywood, you know, Rodeo Drive, all that stuff. But it's interesting because that's the same area that, uh, oh, what's his name? The guy that did the movie on the Great Earthquake in California. Uh, good special effects. I can't even think of it now. Uh, something, something day or something. Uh, the point being is, is that people have poo-pooed that. But interestingly enough, that's on the La Brea Tar Pits, okay? The La Brea Tar Pits are on that route. And so I've been telling people in California, you hear that the La Brea tar pits are starting to bubble up and bubble over, and they're starting to see temperatures rise there. I would get out of that area. <laughs> now, look, I can't tell people to flee. They'd say, ah, ha, ha. But here's what's going to happen, in my opinion. At some time between now and next year, there's going to be, a, let's say, six, seven-point earthquake in California. Mm -hmm. All right. they'll, they'll, they'll basically, you know, they'll make it through. There'll be some damage, and then they'll high-five it and, they, the, the weird things they do in California, they can get worse, and then the big one comes. And I'm not sure if it's going to start on the Juan de Fuca and move south, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and I'm not sure if it's going to move necessarily start in San Diego and move into the area around Borrego Springs. But I'll tell you one thing. The San Andreas will not be the primary focus of the main one. It will go, it will be mm -hmm. what I would say an east to west fault more than a north to south fault. Mm -hmm. But the Cascadia region, we've got Mount St. Adams, uh, Mount, excuse me, Mount St. Helens now is becoming again active. <clears throat> we've got the situation on Mount Rainier. I was on the top of Mount Rainier a couple years ago in a helicopter. Doors open, I was freezing my face off. You know, I look <laughs> like your hat, okay? I mean, I was solid. My, my camera looked like wow. your hat. But I got some great pictures about right. the clouds and everything. Right. But I, I could not shake the feeling. I said, I wonder if those people, and I was looking, obviously, I was on the summit, not by my feet, but by the helicopter, looking to the west, you know, where the ocean was. And I said, I wonder if these people have any clue what's going to happen, meaning Seattle, the whole area. Because Cascadia now has become the number one primary area of concern. And I posted a story, you probably saw it, not necessarily on my website, but the story about the Cascadia subduction fault zone. Yep. Too much, too much activity, and the ring of fire now is disturbing. And I want to share something else with you. One of my listeners in Seattle sent me a thing on Krakatoa, K-R-A-K-A-T-O-A. -A -A. Mm -hmm. They may have added a U, but the, the little volcano that they're worried about there is called Anak Krakatoa. Mm. Well, Anak comes from the Hebrew word Anakim, which there we saw the sons of Anak. Anak was one of the king of the giants. Krakatoa is one of the biggest volcanoes to ever explode. And literally, when it went off, it was heard. Just the sound was heard in Hawaii. But in the Mount Tambora region prior to that, that's uh, a little further to the west in Indonesia, that changed the course of summer. There was no summer. That's the year, wow. by the way, that Mary Shelley wrote Frankenstein. Mm. Mm -hmm. So what I find fascinating, look at this. We've got the... Anak Krakatoa, right. named after one of the giants. All right. Anak, wow. sun in the Indonesian language, I guess. Mm -hmm. We've got the same form of genetic engineering Frankenstein. You had one of the guys on, you know. Yeah, not I did. That, not, yeah, yeah, you did. Then we've got the earthquakes happening. We've got the island of Dr. Moreau, the, the mm -hmm. transgenic, you know. And by the way, there are islands. I know guys, and I know one man who was handpicked by Dr. Edward Teller. Teller was a father of the hydrogen bomb. He was also the head of Majestic, if you look up Majestic 12. Right. That's not BS. That really happened. Yeah. And that my friend was handpicked by him. And he was taken to one of the islands of Dr. Moreau. And you should he couldn't even begin to tell his story. They've tried to kill him, kill his wife. I mean, I'm telling you point blank. And if it hadn't been for the praying people, you know, and God's people praying and God answering the prayers, I mean, he'd be dead and his wife would be dead. Wow. 
These people will do anything. So here, mm -hmm. here's where we're at, Daniel, in my yeah. opinion. We are at the start of the tribulation. People say it can't happen because the church hasn't been raptured yet. I said the only difference between the word rapture and rupture is you, the letter <laughs> U, okay? Mm -hmm. And the idea is somehow that our brethren who are being slaughtered in Syria, being slaughtered in Iraq, I'm talking about Christians, all right. being slaughtered all over the world, their bodies cannibalized, they're literally butchered and hanging in the meat mm -hmm. markets, the children butchered. Having And listen, I'm sorry, I don't know what will get the, quote, Western Christians to wake up. I don't know. I, I, I mean, when I go to sleep tonight, I'll probably roll over a couple times, or, well, a lot of times until I get to sleep. But the point <laughs> is, is that the, the thought always in my mind is, Lord, how do you tell people what's going to happen when they don't care? Number two, why then do we spend our effort time? And I'm, you know, obviously I'm going, I've been at this a long time, Lord. And I know the scripture, don't be uh, weary and patient doing for you'll right. reap, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right. I also know that, you know, you run the race and I'm just going, well, I think I need an intermission and some Gatorade on the side, Lord. <laughs> and, and here's the thing, Daniel, the idea is this. We do what we do in order to preach Jesus, him crucified, resurrected, to give a true witness to that thing, those things which the Word of God, the Bible, is the Bible totally inclusive? No. But is God so concerned with truth that he's not going to give us a fish if we ask for a loaf, or a rock if we ask for a loaf of bread? Mm -hmm. Of course. But the deeper things of God, it's within the heart of a king, you quoted that earlier, mm -hmm. to search out a matter. Solomon was the wisest man in the world, so that there was none like him, nor ever would be. God grant them the desires of the heart, and yet even in the wisdom of men. Let me share something. The folly of demons is even smarter than the wisdom of men. Wow. Because they can look back, they can look forward. The demons cried out to Jesus in the gathering demoniac. Jesus, have you come to what? Torment us before our time? They know there's a place to torment. They know who Jesus was. He silenced them not to speak, the scripture says. Mm -hmm. But the idea is simply this. We are living in the most demonically manifesting times in history. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you saw my email, and I, I, I'll never you know, embarrass anybody uh, openly by telling their names or anything, but I will tell you this, godly men and women are in, uh, godly men and women are fighting things that go bump in the night, incubus, succubus, horrific creatures, aliens and everything, mm -hmm. and it's really happening now. And so whether you believe this stuff or not, it's fascinating. The Christians have a harder time believing in the Satanists who are invoking it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and well, that's that, weird. That's really weird. So it's going to get weirder and weirder. And I really, number one, thanks for coming to Branson last year. Thanks for coming this year. And ladies and gentlemen, you, you really have got to sign up. It's like this, Daniel. People wait till the last minute. I understand that. And then there's no, and this thing's going like gangbusters because people want to be with like-minded people. And they want to be with people that know what they're talking about. Tom Horn and I have been labeled, oh, what a great privilege, by the, uh, the progenitors of the end of humanity in Oxford as we're the leaders of the, you're going to love this, the, the transhuman resistance. Oh, oh great. What, 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 you know, we're both John Connors. The point <laughs> is, you know, I mean, and, and this guy goes in, and Tom could tell you, 28, you need to get him on your show. Yeah, I do. 28 or 30 page dissertation on how we're the male you we're, we're fighting we're luddites we're against technology <laughs> listen when it, when it comes to guys like that you know i say bring it on pal because you know it doesn't matter how many 12 syllable words you know he uses or anything i can just say this i call it bovine laundry okay bovine laundry okay bull b-u-l-l -L, okay and sheet s-h-e-e-t Oh. So go find the laundry, okay? And okay. so, yeah, yeah. So I mean, and listen, you everybody, this is me. Don't get mad at Daniel, but I, I Daniel, I think sometimes you have to kind of uh, oh. slap people alongside the head. You do, Be you do, because because malaise takes over, man. And people, people, you know. And one one thing, I'm not to talk too much about politics, but Trump has been reversing the political speech a little bit. 
And so, you know, you almost forget that we, we could communicate with one another and have our own opinions, but it was wiped out for at least eight years to where you couldn't think or say anything. You had to check with somebody on that. Now we got an opportunity to come back. And sometimes it's just shocking to hear normal talk that was 15 years ago, you know, because we've, we've been so politically corrected and, uh, you know, we got to battle. We got to battle back with that because that prevents people from speaking the truth in love, you know. And sometimes, you know, the Bible says, uh, "Some save some by fear, pulling them out of the fire." And I, and I know you've been accused of fear mongering. I've certainly been accused of anybody that speaks anything that's not the the packaged normal stuff is labeled as a fear monger. But it's not. It's how about truth mongerer? How about that? How about we take that moniker? Well, I want to tell you where fear mongering came. Okay. And, and because I've also, I, I love it, fear porn, okay? Uh, fear porn. First of all, the word porn is a Greek word, okay? And it has nothing to do with fear. It has everything to do with the inscription of uh, porneia. But the idea of fear mongering, a fear monger, it, you could say the Defense Department is fear mongering because that's how they built their, you know, $21 trillion in black budget money by saying we're going to go to war, we're going to go to war, we're going to go to war. Jesus said, and this is what I'm having a hard time with, okay? I've walked with the Lord, fallen, stumbled. He's picked me up so many times for 45 years, 46 years now. But he says, doesn't he? Blessed are you when all men speak evil of you for my name's sake. Uh, so persecuted they the prophets. You know, and I've said to the Lord, Lord, could I be a little less blessed in that realm? You know, because the last thing, and I was complaining. I want to share this with you because it'll probably bless you too. I was complaining. I wish I could say I wasn't, but I was complaining to the Lord. Mm. And I said, God, I don't always like to be the guy that has to take the brunt of things. When you're out ahead, and, and listen, this is where he placed me. I'm not complaining. But he said, Steve, you have to be on the uh, bow of the icebreaker because that's how cold my people's hearts are. Oh. And he said, if you didn't hit the ice first, in other words, the resistance, mm -hmm. the rest of the people couldn't come along behind you. Wow. And I said, well, I think that's a good thing, isn't it, Lord? You know? <laughs> and, and, you know, and, the, and then I said, could I have a little more deck chair experience, maybe on the back of the boat and somebody else can come up? And you know this, that on the bow of the icebreaker, that's the most hardened part of the hull. It has to be. And then it's it's not only hull, it's horsepower. Well, when you're standing with Jesus, he stands with you. And I would encourage the people, the Bible says, the righteous are as bold as lions. Don't let those, how do I say this? Don't let that which is profane, perverted, disgusting, uh, wicked, hateful, set, it, set against the living God, don't let them run with the narrative. Stand up and face it in the power of his might. Because, listen, Daniel, you're fighting, I'm fighting, all of us who are in talk radio are fighting for the last vestiges of information that are going to be, you know, that that people can give. And there'll come a time, I know this, you know this, we're going to be off the air. Mm -hmm. oh. You know, I, I was just totally demonetized on YouTube last mm -hmm. week, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, thank God, you know, the Lord the Lord is my shepherd and not Google, you know? Uh, uh, <laughs> Oh, I touche. shall not. Yeah, I shall not want, although they would like it to be that way, you know. For surely goodness and mercy will follow me, not AI and snoopers. And you know, it's interesting because I I am not on Facebook. I hired my uh, uh, a woman to watch my Facebook. I had to have a Facebook account because there were tens of thousands of people posing as me and posting my stuff, and then putting really raunchy stuff on it. But I call face. Book, the Faces of Death book, because if people understood when Marcus Wolf, the former head of the East German Stasi, was hired by the U.S. government, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, very few of us, Alex Jones and I, were screaming about, now this is 20 years ago, and the deal is, is that look at Facebook, it is everything. Now they want to know who you sleep with. You know how yeah. they'll find that? They'll just find out who you're texting or whatever. They'll see little Julie talking about what your performance was the other night or oh. don't even bother. And see, it's disgusting to have a talk about this stuff. But this is tame compared to what our kids are being exposed yeah. to. You know, <laughs> listen, somehow I don't believe it's right to bring a drag queen into a kindergarten dressed like, uh, you know, a demoness with horns on her head. You know, and looks like she just crawled out of the bottomless pit to go on R&R, &R, you know, <laughs> teaching our children what's normal. Uh -huh. But 
but Daniel, where are the men of God? And I don't know yet where the scriptures that may be in Nahum, and and I'll I'll send it to you and you can post mm-hmm. it. But sure. it basically says all the women, all the men in the midst of thee are women. Ooh. Sounds like they had an identity issue too. Wow. Well, so. Yeah. Well, no, we, we need to find the remember the in, in the scriptures where they, they went down to the river and uh, said, you're going to pick out 300, 300 men. And, you know, they're all up there lapping the water in. But some of them were down there and, and they never would look down at the water. They were looking up. We need those guys. <coughs> we know those, t- those type of guys yeah. that are aware that that have been seeking the knowledge we talked about in the first hour. And, and you know, uh, knowledge you know, my uh, knowledge is, is a power. It really is. And, and it, you can convince people to head to the right direction with the correct right. knowledge. Well, you were at Branson. Remember when I got up on stage and I said, Gideon's army, you're talking about Gideon. Okay. Mm-hmm. And God took it down from 30,000 to 300, you know, mm-hmm. and I've been praying for a long time because I said, Lord, where's Gideon's army? Because honestly, and I mean, I spent 20 years on talk radio in my man cave, never having a picture of me on the internet, except one that was taken 20 years ago. I had more hair then, so that's when I knew it was. But the point is, is that there's a time that God says, come out now, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, 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 all I can say is, if, if anybody's ever been around the desert, I have. It's easier not to go to the desert. It's easier to go to the mountaintop and meet with the Lord. But here's what I want to encourage God's people. Number one, God loves you. Number two, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Number three, in your weakness, he's made strong. Mm-hmm. Number four, Jesus is the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and the God of all creation. You wow. never have to be ashamed of him. Mm-hmm. Don't let someone with an argument and a, a pet perversion shame you in any way, shape, or form. Stand mm-hmm. on the power of his might and in the power of his word. Memorize, commit to, scri- to memory the scripture. And that scripture, the word of God, is sharper than a two-edged sword. And when we start to do that, it's when the see, the people of God are being beaten down by the devil, and we believe to lie. When the Lord says to the bones, like in Ezekiel's dry boneyard, uh, boneyard, arise, can these bones live, Ezekiel? My answer to the Lord would have been, only if you do it, Lord. Mm-hmm. But, you know, God has to do it. And here's something else. There is no instant in the New or Old Testament when God's people ever got victory apart from him. God's people always got victory over insurmountable odds mm-hmm. when God came to fight for them. Good example is Jehoshaphat. Good example is David. Good example is Gideon. Mm-hmm. Good example, good example. And guess what? The key denominator was no one boasted in their own strength, but in the might and the power of Almighty God. And my answer to everybody is Jesus loves you. But he will not force you to believe in him. And never in history has there been a time when so much biblical prophecy has come into the focus and so much fulfilled prophecy is happening in the headlines. Mm -hmm. And except the days be short and there be no flesh left alive, transhumanism and hybrids are the absolute final battle for us to fight. In other words, Daniel, I've written 11 books, you know, Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of radio show. I don't know how many thousands, 10,000 hours now, so, no you know, a lot. Mm-hmm. And so the thing is, is that um, at, at this point in my life, I'm not going into retirement. Like I said, I, I mean, my truck's got, you know, 580 horsepower. I, you know, oh. I trade cars. So, so you know, I mean, uh, you know, I just had a 700 and some horsepower car. Mm-hmm. But now you live in Montana and it's perpetual winter now. You know, you got to have a Ford Raptor. You juice it up and, you know, you go for it. <laughs> People, right. people like get stuck in parking lots. I mm-hmm. just see that as a challenge to go over. Mm-hmm. But, you know, in Montana, it's a different place. But here's the thing. You don't have to put the brakes on people because Jesus will take the wheel. And somebody says, well, I don't want to I don't want to offend anybody. Let me make this easy. When I said that to the Lord 22 years ago on talk radio, he said, Steve, you can't offend dead people. The people that don't know him are dead in their trespasses yeah. and sin. You own the words of life. You have the power to pull that person out of death into life. And Daniel, I want to bless you for what you do, brother. Thank you so much. And I mean, it's an honor to be on here with you. But it was also, I wish we could get to see each other the last time. But I promise you, this coming uh, September at the Branson Conference, again, ladies and gentlemen, please go Gen, G-E-N, 6, S-I-X, 
uh, what forward slash conference. Mm -hmm. And I think that you should uh, go there just to even see the skulls and really pray about coming because you're going to have some of the smartest people there in the world. You have Tom Horn. You're going to have Hugo DeGarris. If you haven't heard Tim Alberino, he's amazing. Uh, obviously, obviously, you know, uh, the Lord has given me. I was in the shower once. I got to share this with you. And I said, God, I just, I gotta, I gotta reproduce myself. And who can I turn my mantle over to? Because I was reading about Elijah and Elisha, and I'm not Elijah. That's not what I'm saying. But the biggest mistake I see in Christendom, looking back with Derek Prince, Bob Mumford, all the guys I grew up with, even T. L. Osborne, some of the greats. Okay, they didn't have what you would call a disciple or a student or a protege to to pass the mantle mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. So that's something we've got to pray. And we're praying that this conference in Branson, again, it's called Transhumanism and the Hybrid Age, mm -hmm. is going to bring young people because we have to teach them, train them, and they have an answer to the snowflakes. By the way, mm -hmm. none of the young people I hang with are snowflakes. None of the ones I hang with, <laughs> none of the ones I hang right on. with, yeah, none of the ones I hang with are uh, basically dipping their binkies in Prozac, you know. None of the ones I, uh, they're not having crayon sessions because they can't cope. What an affront to Almighty God, and, you know, let God arise, his enemies be scattered, and then let the men of God come forth out of their grave clothes, as Lazarus came forth out of the tomb, in the power and the anointing of Almighty God. That is my prayer. Man, I feel like, I feel like shouting, Steve. You awesome. can shout. It's your show. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, wait, did I, did I say hell yeah? Oops. Hey, Cowboys you know, can say I, that. Hell, hell yes, because listen, it's hell no. We don't want you to go to hell, but it's hell yes if you don't choose Jesus. Mm. And you know, it's funny because I, I used to hear state people say like this because I used to be wilder than a hare until Jesus got a hold of me. Oh, I was just, I was disgusting, okay? okay. And I won't even share my testimony because it's not, I'll share it, in, but, but here's the bottom line. People, when this old hymn is rescue the perishing, everybody's perishing without mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if the righteous barely be saved, what will be the, you know, what, what, what will the wicked do? What will, where will they go? Mm -hmm. what will, where will they run to? And, Daniel, what's going to come? And I don't know when. Please, people will send me an email after your show saying, when, when? Has the Lord shown you when? Well, I'm a blabbermouth. The Lord shows me when. I'm going to tell everybody. <laughs> right. But he hasn't. And I asked Scott about that. I said, Lord... I want more than anything to tell people what's going to happen ahead of time. I'm not a prophet. Never have claimed that. I do not claim that. But the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, and mm. Jesus was the ultimate prophecy, prophet. But here's the deal. Because God so honors free will, there are still people that are making decisions now, at this moment in time and space, mm -hmm. that will have an effect on what happens tomorrow or the next day. And that's what the Lord spoke to my heart, and he finally gave me peace. He said, I honor free will, Steve. And I allow the free will of men to determine the fate and outcome of history. Wow. 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 And that, that is amazing. Uh, Steve Quill, I appreciate you coming on the Age Television Broadcast. I've been having in our background the True Legends uh, Conference uh, logo there with the dates of September 14th to the 16th. And you're right. Those tickets are going to go fast. I mean, what a collection of people and the knowledge and inspiration that comes with that. I was there. And I tell you, it was uh, one of the best events of my life, actually. And, you know, we're going to pull our trailers. We're going to pull our trailer down into Branson next time. And But I'm going to be sure to meet you personally and say hello to you. And uh, <laughs> so it's going to be great to see you there. Oh, thank you. And again, ladies and gentlemen, I would encourage you to, to go on my website, stevequail.com, and acquire the book Empire Beneath the Ice. It is having a profound effect on people. And the other one is Xenogenesis. Xenogenesis, X-E-N-O-G-E-N-E-S-I-S. -E -E -S. Xenogenesis, Daniel, in the 13th chapter, was dictated by a uh, dying CIA high-ranking, not an operative, but a mm -hmm. high-ranking, even beyond station chief, somebody on a Washington, D.C. level mm -hmm. at the top, telling people why chemtrails and what they're doing. The bottom line is chemtrails are bringing the Earth back to a primordial phase, and they're tearing down the boundaries that God had placed to keep all this evil stuff out of our, uh, if you will, sphere of existence. The book is Xenogenesis or Empire Beneath the Ice. You'll never look at the world the same. And the headlines uh, that I wrote about when I wrote those books, they're an everyday occurrence now. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, and I've had those. Uh, I put the book covers as you were speaking. I changed them just for you to show the folks the, the book covers. Uh, Steve Quell, I appreciate you coming on the Edge Television broadcast. Can I, have you, can I have you back on again sometime? Thank you, Daniel, and I love your hat.